It's a pleasure to welcome you all in the new part of the car assembly from Cyberpunk 2077. In the previous part we prepared almost all the elements of the interior from fiberglass. Next on course is to whip and to shape the car suspension by changing its geometry and removing the negative wheel camber. For this purpose I'm gonna make custom adjustable levers for both front and rear suspension. I'll start from the front wheels. First I determined how deep the wheel slipped behind the arch. It turned out about 4 cm after measuring from the splasher of Quadra. Of course it's incorrect to measure the angles by sight, but I need to go by of something. Let it be a vertical level. All the same the levers will be adjusted on the wheel alignment stand. They can be configured correctly. According to the level, the deviation has already turned out to be about 5 cm. Now we need to take off the wheel and see what can be done with the levers to change the wheel tilting. By the way, it's also possible to get rid of spacers in the future by extending the levers according to the spacer thickness. But you need to approach this business wisely, cause after the levers extension we need to lengthen the tie rods and redo the shock absorbers. Now the main thing is about to adjust the camber angle. I'll remove the top lever, as I need to take measurements of it. This process was kinda tough. Whether it was tightened that much or just the nut got stuck, it wasn't even possible to unscrew it with the control arm. It turned out that the nut was simply welded. A very interesting solution for sure, and probably the convenient one, but I wish I knew about it earlier. There was a chance to save the nut head, but that's alright. I won't touch the original control arm. I'll make my own variant with the adjustment according to it. For this purpose we need to measure the upper ball joint and the bushings so that the new control arm can get in its place as it should. Curiously enough, we managed to find the suitable replacement parts. The bushing is thicker than the original one, but almost the same in width. I'll grind half a millimeter with an angle grinder. I also took the ball socket from another car, which can be pressed into a new control arm. The cone and the thread are perfectly suitable to the steering knuckle. To make the control arm elements, I'll need 10 mm thick steel slab. Of course, the entire control arm could be cut out of it, but the plasma CNC machine is not yet ready. Next time I'll cut out a solid control arm from the slab, in case I'll think about removing the spacers. In the meantime, I'm gonna weld the control arm from a seamless pipe. I'll make the casing for the bushings from the pipe. I'll just reduce its diameter and drill through as before. I'll cut the segment from the pipe near the weld. The diameter is reduced for the bushing size conservatively rated for groove. The casing is ready, now we need to cut out the control arm adjustment mechanism from the steel plate. This is a detail which will be an organic unit with the control arm. A ball socket will move along it, changing the wheel inclination. The ball socket platform will also be cut out of 10 mm plate. Its diameter of bore is 39.5 mm. I took the crown for 38 mm. It makes a hole of 39 mm, at least that's the result of my drilling machine. I'm gonna lead the hole till the desired diameter manually, using a pencil grinder. I think that's enough for pressing. Next, we need to cut a pair of segments in the ball socket platform, in which the bolts will be placed and can move with the platform like along the slide rails.
All the control arm elements are ready, now they need to be connected together. I'll use a steel slab to weld them and set all the dimensions according to the original control arm, except for length. I made it a couple of centimeters larger. After setting all the dimensions, I connected all the elements with a weldless pipe. After the seal welding of the control arm, I waited for it to cool down and began to press the bushings in it. I pressed the second bushing and tried on the control arm in its place after its painting. The control arm fitted its place perfectly as an original. Then I pressed the ball socket into the movable platform. The ball socket housing is just 10 millimeters high as a plate. A retaining ring sat tightly in its place. Now we need to screw the ball socket to the control arm and see how it's going to work in assembly. I raised the steering knuckle with a screw jack to the height of a completely lowered car, but never reached this level. The ball socket motion limits the movement. The same thing was with the Cybertruck. To fix this, we need to change the splice angle of the ball socket. Now it lets the control arm to fully rise and it works in a normal mode. I put on the wheel and check the level. It was just as I conjectured. Now the wheel seems to be slipped outside, but it only feels like this because of the bumper which should be bent inside and also because of the rocker panel, which I think I'll leave as it is. It'll work like a splash guard. Now it's the end point concerning the adjustment. I expanded the slide rails so that the wheel can get slipped inside. There is a range of adjustment of the ball socket shift and it's about more or less 10 millimeters, and along the top of the wheel it'll be more or less 5 centimeters. Now we can put all the suspension elements into place and put quadra down on wheels. I did the same thing from the other side. After the assembly, I didn't manage to determine the level by eye. Now I'll fix it. We can also make a pair of tack welds so that the adjustment cannot be reset, or rather take an adjusting screw, as the one for the chain tension in a motorcycle. The front suspension is ready. Now we need to refine the rear control arms. 
By the way, most of all complaints in the comments were about the rear wheels, as their camber was very notable due to the wide wheels. Of course I like how such camber looks on JDM cars, but they certainly don't fit Quadra. There are five single tube control arms on the rear suspension. Two on top, two on the bottom and one for the convergence adjustment. I'll add the adjustment to the upper levers. Their adjustment will be carried out using the track rod adjusting mechanism. These elements should be simply added to the control arm construction. By the way, the arms pipe is thin and arc welded. There was no reason to worry about the weldless pipe on the front control arms. There are two variants of adjustment construction. First one is to saw the threaded coupling and weld its parts to the control arm pipe. While the stud rotation, the control arm extension will be adjusted. The second one is to saw the stud, weld its parts to the pipe as well, and to adjust the arm's extension by the coupling rotation. I chose the second variant. Due to the fact that one part of the coupling has a right-handed thread, and another one has a left-handed thread, the control arm will change its length during the rotation. The nuts are needed to fix the position. The control arms are in place, we can put on the wheel and put it to the test. I practically fit it in with the level. We need to increase the length of two control arms by a couple of millimeters. Now it perfectly coincides and the wheel lies flat on the floor with both parts. The task is completed. If you like the result, put your thumb up and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next part.